Hi everybody, welcome back to The Reason We Learn. I'm Deb Fellman, mom, homeschooler, ex-teacher, and individualist. I even I am so glad there's an X in front of teacher, at least insofar as you might equate me on any level with the person I'm about to show you. Um, it it's it's a profession I don't want to be associated with in its current incarnation. California teacher caught berating students in leaked Zoom over push for in-person learning. Come at me. I am so sick to my stomach of parents trying to tell educators how to do their job. California teacher tells students. Now I will play you the short video clip of this teacher having her meltdown. Before I do, I would like to ask you if you would please consider what kind of adults you feel comfortable having in the presence of your children for any length of time. And I mean, you know, seven to 18 years of age. I, I don't think they have to be tiny tots for you to be concerned about how adults behave in their presence, how adults speak to them, and even just what kind of people they are as far as the their ability to impart wisdom, you know, model maturity, professionalism, the kinds of qualities you would like your child to have when they go out into the world when they're 18. So just keep that in your mind before I show this to you, because this is really disturbing to me. Alrighty, exclusive California high school teacher was caught on camera berating students for the parents collective push to end remote learning and return children to their classrooms full time. I thought the woke teachers loved collective action. Apparently not. In a video shared on Facebook, San Marcos High School teacher Alyssa Pirro can be heard raising her voice at several seniors during a virtual lesson over Zoom. The Reopen California Schools post says newly released video of San Marcos USD high school teacher going off on students and their parents over distance learning and other issues. Originally posted to Facebook, are, apparently this is a common occurrence. Let's listen in, shall we? themselves out the haters did they are forced to bring awareness to the situation that they are in because other people put them in that situation she's talking about black students by the way as far as i understand it well, my question is in your case where is the uh, white student union? Because because we, we need all you need equality. a white student union jane oh. you get everything you get everything. If your parent wants to talk to me about their profession and their opinion on their profession, I would love to hear that. I know very little about anything else in the world other than education. Did you hear that? I know very little about anything else in the world but education. Now. How do you feel about that, about a high school teacher? Here's the thing. I don't expect school teachers to know a lot about, you know, everything or even everything about a little. But to say I don't know anything about other professions, that's concerning. That is concerning because when you teach high school kids about the world, I don't care what subject you're teaching you are bringing up issues that that impact their perception of other professions of how things work in the world i consider it to be your responsibility to have a working knowledge of how the world and different professions interact and basically functions but if what you're telling me is you went to college and then you went teaching or you went to college and you went to grad school and then you taught and you know nothing about other professions very little, you probably shouldn't be teaching above fifth grade. And even then, I'm being generous. I'm being generous. If you're teaching high school, you should have a working knowledge of how the world of work works because almost every subject is going to involve that whether you're reading literature, science, math, all of it is now you're, you're reading to learn, you're learning applied material. We hope, of course, it's probably not happening either, but let's continue. Okay. However, 
If your parent wants to come talk to me about how I'm not doing a good enough job in distance learning based on what you need as an individual. Do you hear the sneering? Like your parent, what I'm not getting enough job about what you need as an individual. So regardless of the words, the tone is bullying. This is dismissive. This is int- designed to intimidate. It's nasty. It's rude. They're speaking about the parent, assuming the parent isn't going to hear this in a very derogatory way. Like, how dare they have, find fault with what I'm doing? Maybe not meeting your needs. You getting the impression that she doesn't feel like it's her job to meet individual needs? I hope so, because she doesn't think it is. Just dare them to come at me. Because I'm so sick to my stomach of parents trying to tell educators how to do their job. I... She's sick to her stomach about parents trying to tell educators. Yeah, honey, I'm sorry. That's not what you are. Not really sure what you are, but you're not an educator. You're not even a teacher. You are a narcissistic little whiny bitch who gets paid no matter what, who's speaking to children whose parents may have lost their jobs or may be really severely stressed right now. Their kids are at home. They haven't been able to see their friends or go out. This is California, remember? They haven't been able to do any of the usual things teenagers are able to do, and your life hasn't been impacted that much. You get to work from home in your jammies or your work mullet or whatever, you know, a blouse on top, Jamie's on the bottom. And you have the nerve to say you're sick of parents who have been at this for a year now. Wow. I've never once gone to a doctor's appointment and tried to tell my medical health provider how to treat me. Well, I have news for you. Maybe you should start because it's your body. And you probably should learn how to be an advocate for yourself. And that's different from telling someone how to treat you. But you know what? I've had to do that. I've literally had to do that. I've had to prevent malpractice, including unnecessary surgery, by telling my medical practitioner they're wrong. And not only did I save my life, but I also had to tell a medical practitioner something about my daughter and saved her life too, because I actually studied up on it, figured out what was going on. And since we weren't getting treated properly, I advocated for us. So sometimes you do have to do that. Just because you have a title or a degree or a white lab coat doesn't mean you know everything about everyone. And it certainly doesn't mean that you know better about a child than their parent. Okay. If you think everybody in a white lab coat knows better about your body than you do, I feel very sorry for you. You know why? Because I know nothing about that. I didn't get my degree in medicine. Your degree is what you need. Knowing your own body is what you need, okay? Just like knowing your own child is what you need to understand that they're not getting what they need from you as a teacher. They spend all their time on the weekends and what the kid was little and talking to the child on a personal level you are behind a camera behind a screen miles away and you don't have any connection to these children I think they know better than you your degree didn't teach you jack I am going off I'm sorry this is my go off period no this is your teaching period This is your teaching period. This is not your go off period. This is not your private play space. Just because you're in your home, and this is one of the problems, guys, with this distance learning thing, the way it's being done with these people not being professional distance educators, people who do this where like they understand the responsibility of coming into someone's home. This is what they sort of signed up for, agreed to do, et cetera, and they've been um, trained to do this and be professional about it. No. They think they're just at home having to do this job. Ugh, so annoying. So they're out of the headspace of treating these kids like students. They talk to them like they're equals on the one hand, but then they talk down to them like they're in a power position. This is wrong on so many levels. This woman is deeply disturbed. I don't know if this is a function of what the pandemic has done to her and maybe she needs some help. It doesn't really matter. She's bullying these kids. I don't doubt it's not the first time. In the article, she teaches English, by the way. English. Um, so it says, Piro, who teaches English, appears to be referencing an ongoing lawsuit launched by a coalition of parents against Ga- Governor Gavin Newsom in 6 North 
uh, country school districts seeking COVID re- to ease COVID, re- COVID restrictions, return to physical classrooms, et cetera. So she's annoyed. And then she doesn't want to be told how to do her job. And here's the really sad part. The really sad part. The video was filmed by a family member of a student in attendance and was shared to a private Facebook group aimed at reopening schools in the district before being obtained by Fox News. After over a year of remote learning, the district recently agreed to a hybrid model which allows students to attend in-person learning two days a week. The local union reportedly voted to keep the hybrid model for the duration of the school year for no reason, outraging parents and students anxious to return to in-person instruction. In another video shared on the platform, Piero can be heard aggressively yelling at a student inquiring about a white student union. You don't need a white student union, Jake. You get everything, the teacher retorts. A mother of a student in Piero's class told Fox News that she brought the videos to the attention of the school principal, Adam Dawson, several weeks ago. Dawson agreed that Piero's behavior was inexcusable, good, and vowed to address it, but failed to follow up. How do you fail to follow up on that video? This is what they do. Oh, yes, it's terrible. Oh, it's terrible. Nothing happens. So that's part of why parents don't bring their concerns. They don't feel like they're respected. Dawson did not immediately return Fox News' request for comment. She's a bully, the mother wrote in the Open SM School's private Facebook group. These rants were so often, my child said he tuned her out and was just trying to get through the class. This is exactly what's wrong with education. And if the school district sweeps this, then they are just as responsible. The mother said she cried after the video was sent to her by her child while at work. These poor kids have endured so much. I held on to the video for three months. This is the sad part. If you thought it was sad that the teacher did it, you really ought to think it's sadder that the mother held on to the video for three months and hardly told a soul, fearing retaliation. I shared it with some of my close friends a few weeks ago when I saw her behavior was continuing this term and I felt awful for not standing up for these kids sooner. A different mother posted that Piero had previously taught her daughter at a high-tech elementary school, but that she was eventually fired and appears to have gone downhill since that. So she was fired from an elementary school and given a position in a high school. So if you wonder why I'm so down on the public schools, here you go. In one story. Really, in one story. I don't think you really need more evidence than this because you know she's not alone. And the comfort with which she expressed herself so forcefully tells the tale. She didn't really have any compunction about doing this. None. She probably knows because she's in a union. She knows the principal's not going to follow up. He's going to pay lip services, do nothing. Parents are afraid to speak up three months. This child of this mother or all the children in this class really had to sit in this class and be talked to this way about themselves, about their parents. This is child abuse. The entire thing is child abuse. There's no taking back these schools. What are you going to do? Are you literally going to fire all of these people? They they will be fired when there are no kids to teach. But you are not, they have contracts. Unless you elect somebody to be the governor who doesn't care, who cares as much for contracts as President Biden does or any other Democrat. They, they shred contracts when it suits their purposes, private ones, but they won't touch a union contract. So unless you get someone in there who is like, okay, fine. If we're all playing the contracts don't matter game, let's get rid of the teacher's contracts. Good luck with that. And in the meantime, your child is spending months in a classroom just trying to get through a class. Is that what you want for your child? Just trying to get through it? If you wonder why we have an illiteracy problem, if you wonder why these kids are miserable and have mental illness and are using drugs and just, you know, committing suicide and so forth, here you go. If you wonder why other kids are disrespectful to their parents, here you go. Those who are impressionable and see this and maybe somehow identify with this woman, that can happen too, oddly enough. Maybe they don't have a great relationship with their parents. This doesn't help. They're not supposed to do harm. They're doing harm. So... I'm about to post another video after this one that uh, tells you my my take on this whole situation, what you need to do, but consider this your evidence about why you need to do what I suggest in the next video. So if you like this sort of content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. It feeds the algorithm. Thank you for watching. See you next time.